Hello everybody and welcome to this week's official VRTK weekly live stream. Um, I'm just going to tell people in Slack that it's gone live now. If there's anyone in here that's not already a member of the Slack channel, you should be. Hello Mage C. Perez. Um, let me just tell people in the Slack channel it's live. Uh, Streaming live now at there, just so they know. Um, did I say there's a Slack channel? Yeah, it's invite.vrtk.io if you're not already a member and you're watching this. Um, as you can get a ton of help in there, it's just over 1,800 members in there now. It's pretty, pretty busy all the time, loads of cool devs helping each other out. Um, I think what I'll do first of all, um, if people want to start throwing out any questions, if you've got any questions, cool, but I'm just going to kind of give like a, a weekly recap of what's happened in the world of VRTK over the week, um, and I'll try and do that every video. So I'm just going to look through the commits, and then I'll, I'll tell you what's happened. So one of the first commits was a fix with the body physics script that it was causing crashes, potentially sometimes when you switched scene, and you could notice this in example scenes as well, that if you switch from scene A to scene B, there was sometimes a race condition where some variable didn't get set and it would cause Unity to crash, so that's been fixed. Um, there's a new feature on the teleporter script, so if we just go and have a look at the height adjust teleport, and look on the play area, height adjust teleport now, has uh, a snap to nearest floor setting on it. So what would happen previously is, and this actually came up in last stream actually, is if you if you were to set um, your uh, play area, so actually I'll tell you what, I'll show you this because I'll show you what happened last stream. So we were in this scene, where's my mouse? We were in this scene and we put this up in the air. So what the, the uh, heart just teleport would do, Turn my control on. Uh, what the hydrous teleport would do would be it would get to that point and then it would find the nearest floor to snap to. So you couldn't actually be floating in the air, it would always pull you down to the ground. Why my controller turned itself off? Stay on controller. There we go. So if I run this scene with that setting on and then I teleport up to that if I can reach it. Can I find it there? So if I teleport up there, you see this white box here, that's the camera rig, and it's actually snapped me down, which somebody was uh, asking about last week. So that's been fixed now. Um, this is a great thing with people throwing out questions in these live streams as well. It helps me and the other developers of VRTK to kind of figure out what people want and what people don't want. So if we go into there now, and on the hot just teleport, we say don't snap to nearest floor when uh, teleporting. What we can do now is if we do teleport to that one, I can just grab it, there we go. See, the white box stays up in the air, so it doesn't actually now snap us to that nearest floor. It leaves the, the Y position of the camera rig um, where its initial teleport point was. So if you do want one of these destination points where you want to use the force teleport uh, and all sorts of different things like that, you can do that. Oh yeah, it was you, wasn't it, Valerie? There you go, so that's fixed. Um, and there you go, there's, there's proof that we do listen. Um, so that's that one. Uh, there's another one um, that was primarily with the body physics scripts. Uh, so let's go to, let's say, Twitchpad walking. Um, on the body physics script, what would happen uh, would be if you walked into a trigger collider, it would still have an effect on the player because there's a bunch of raycasts that happen in all of the different um, scripts, whether it's body physics or uh, the position rewinds, and all these things, I do uh, raycasts to work out where you are, but they weren't ignoring trigger colliders by default, which you could have done, there was a workaround for it, because you can provide this custom raycast object, and I'll show you what that does. It, basically, the raycasts that are going on in any script can take a custom raycast object, and then you can give it a custom raycast object, so custom raycast um, and then you can determine what you want that raycast to be for there so you can say ignore these layers 
Uh, so we can tell it what lads want to ignore and we can determine what its trigger and traction is, whether we want it to use the global trigger and traction, ignore triggers or collide with triggers. And then once you've done that, you can just drag and drop that onto, I don't know, where is it? It's all there. Yeah. You can drag and drop that onto there uh, and that would have fixed it for you. But really, um, it shouldn't be interacting with triggers by default anyway. So that's been fixed now. So things like uh, body physics, position rewind and a few other things uh, don't interact with triggers by default so if you do want them to interact with triggers uh, then you would have to do what I've just said here with the custom raycast and set this to collide rather than having to set it to ignored as you would have done before. Um, so that was also fixed. Um, there's a couple of other errors with the SDK object fixed. Uh, there was another issue as well um, let's just go to hot just teleport for instance. So there's another issue where if you disabled one of these scripts and then ran the scene, what would happen is the SDK manager would re-enable this. So that's been fixed now. So if you do have these disabled on start and run the scene, you can see it actually does stay disabled now. So that's been fixed as well. Um, ensure snap to nearest floor, floor uh, ensure snap to nearest floor is called when climbing. So there's been a few issues with climbing and the position rewind and that which have uh, been looked into and hopefully been fixed now. So what was happening previously with climbing was if you climbed up somewhere, so I'm just going to do this in the uh, editor rather than actually in the game because I can't be bothered to stand up. So if you climb up somewhere and then you didn't get right on top of it, you just got your headset kind of up here, what would happen is what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to then snap you to this nearest floor so you're actually standing on it. But what was actually happening was it was picking up the rigid body collision between the body physics collider and the floor and then throwing the player back out and they were falling down. So that's now been fixed. Um, so when you climb up and you put your head over something, it will snap you to that floor. Uh, and there's been a few things in position rewind that's fixed as well. So climbing now also handles its own position rewind. So that's nice. Um, and then there was a bunch of other just chores which aren't really interesting. Uh, ensure the SDK manager reference is global. Okay, that was just another quick fix. Uh, there's a couple of simulator fixes. Okay, so there's another one for uh, position rewind. I'll tell you what, I can do this one on uh, 17. Let's drop that in there. Um, so now on the uh, headset collision, you can also forcibly tell this to ignore trigger colliders. Um, because you may want it to actually fade um, on collision with the trigger collider, or you may want it to ignore that. So you can actually now tick this off. This is nothing to do with raycasts, as we talked about before, because the headset collision script generates a trigger collider that follows the headset around. When that touches another trigger collider, that actually passes the, the Unity collision um, equality test. So this is just a way of bypassing that, saying don't actually... Uh, raise any headset collisions um, and then also on the position rewind as well so there's a, this is on there as well so if the headset collision script does interact with trigger colliders what could happen it would also rewind you so now you can have it fade if you collide um, but still walk through if you wanted so you could ignore triggers for instance so you can mix and match so that's been added um, doo -doo 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 -doo. There's been a long-standing issue with the object interactor script on the pointer. So if we just go to the simple pointer. So when you run the scene, uh, actually let's just add this. So if you add this interactive with objects, what this does is when we run the scene, um, your pointer exists as a top level um, object. But the object interactor, the thing that allows you to interact, uh, like grab things with the pointer, actually ends up being a child of the camera rig. So it will be in right controller and it will be here. Is that it? I'm not sure if that's it or it doesn't get generated until... Oh yeah, is that is it, the object interactor container. So what the problem was, was if you resized the camera rig, let's say you wanted to go into god mode or something, can you resize that camera rig? Um, this would get bigger but it would no longer match the size of this so it was difficult to resize the camera rig and still use that object interactor so that's been fixed now so this does track that uh, that size correctly so that's another nice little fix um, another important thing as well is on the 
body physics script. So body physics now has a new method on it. Uh, if we look at this in the scripts, it's in here somewhere. I think it's the, the bottom one maybe. Oh yeah, here it is. So there's this new method called sweep collision. So with the body physics uh, script now, you can use this sweep collision method to basically say where the body physics collider is, send out a capsule collider, a capsule collider in the size of my body physics collider in a direction for a certain distance and check to see if any collisions are going to happen. Um, and this can be really useful for preventing collision tunneling. So somebody noticed with the the uh, doors that you can get within BRTK, the controllers, that if you use the body physics script and the touchpad walking and walked at one of the doors, the the tunneling would take place and it would cause the door to swing open and then you could just walk through a door just by running at it, even if the door didn't open that way. So this fix now um, also sits within the, the touchpad controls for walking around. And if you walk towards the door, it'll cast out in front of it and say, am I about to hit something? And if it's about to hit something, it won't actually move them forward so that um, unity collision can never take place. So that was a nice... Uh, fix that can be used in other places as well if you wanted to. Um, another big thing as well is uh, events have now been added for I think all actions that VRTK does. So I'm just going to do this via the Unity event rather than actually going to the, the C Sharp delegates. So the concept of an event is when something happens, uh, an action happens within a script, you want to raise this event so you don't have to then listen for for booleans or check a method to see if something's changed or something. You can be told when something's changed. So, And there was a lot of events that were already in VRTK, obviously the controller events being one of the obvious, so you press a button, you don't have to be listening for that uh, a boolean to be changed, you go, is this ball changed, is this ball changed, and an update, you can just register for the event, so it's a lot neater and it's a lot... Um, a lot less overhead, but there were still a lot of events within VRTK that, or a lot of actions within VRTK that happened um, that there weren't any events for. So I went through and I think I've got them all now. So I think every action that happens in VRTK should now have a C Sharp Delegate event for it and therefore in turn have a Unity event for it. So even if we look down here, um, so for instance, there's the UI draggable item. If we just look at here, uh, there's there were two things that happen when you, you can drag an item you can drag an item and you can drop it so when you drop it we now get a, this item's been dropped event and you can drop it and it and it isn't a valid drop so it gets reset so now we get a, an item reset event as well and also within the I think it's within the interact grab and use and all that so previously you just had um, a grab, so on a, when you grab something you had an event. Now we've got a start grab and a start ungrab and there's also a start touch, a start untouch and a start use and a start unuse. Um, and this happens before any code is run in that grab event. So what people would have sometimes is they'd, they'd want to do something at the point of grabbing but remember the state prior to grabbing but when that uh, grab interacted object had happened, state had already been changed. So with this start one, you can actually now hook into that and do anything before any state is changed on an object. So that's quite useful. But as I said, there's tons of new events in here now. Uh, there's, there should be an event for everything now, hopefully. Um, so that was pretty big. You can also, as well, in the body physics scripts now, provide uh, a custom game object for the body collider and a custom game object for the foot collider. So this was an issue, I think, for somebody where they were saying that the foot collider on certain surfaces, you couldn't, because it auto-generates um, a capsule collider, it was really difficult to apply uh, physics materials to it to make it like not slide about as much as maybe you wanted it to slide, who knows. Um, so now you can do that because there is now a method in the body physics that will return the, the foot collider game object, so you could access it by script if you want, or you can also now just provide a custom game object that contains a capsule collider, and then you can apply whatever physics material you want to it and then just provide that here, and um, it'll work. Just going to jump back quickly though to that uh, that collision sweep detection thing because somebody did mention this. 
and I just want to show it while I'm in this uh, thing. So to do that uh, collision sweep detection, Body Physics does uh, has that sweep collision method in it, but you have to tell the movement me mechanism that to listen to, uh, to that it has a certain body physics script, so it knows to check uh, for for potential collisions. So in the touchpad walking script, which is where this person found it, if you go to the touchpad control options, these are where these uh, object control actions are, and now certain ones of them can accept a body physics script. So I I think it's the slide script and I think it's the warp script can accept body physics. Rotate obviously does, yeah, rotate doesn't and snap rotate doesn't because that doesn't move you forward or backwards, it just rotates you around. Um, so to get uh, this, to so the touchpad walking, to get the slide motion to detect if you're going to collide with something and therefore not move you forward, you have to give it your body physics script and to do that you just, whatever game object your body physics is on. Just drag it and drop it into there. And this now says, I've got a body physics script. Thanks for that. I'm going to use that body physics script. So when I move the player forward, I'm going to check to see if I'm going to collide with something. And the same is also for the moving play script, which is the arm swing script. So if we just go and have a look in that. Um, where is the arm swing? Moving play. So moving place has uh, a body physics arm as well. Um, and without that, it won't bother checking if there's going to be a collision happening. Um, and to put it on there, obviously, you just drag this script and drop it. So just collapse a bunch of these. It's not going to be great. Right. So if I drag this and I drop it down here, that will then tell the moving play script um, while I'm walking forward. <coughs> Excuse me. Check for collisions um, or collisions that may about to happen and then prevent me from walking through things. So just jumping back to that because somebody was asking about that in the week. Um, so I think they've been the main changes this week. Um, hopefully the coming week now, I've now got the hands, uh, hand models that Jim the Grim's done from the Slack channel, I'm hopefully going to try and implement them this week. And I'm also going to hopefully try and implement the, the concept where uh, snap handles are uh, only ever defined to the Vive alignment or the Vive wand alignment. What you really want to be able to do is have a snap handle say, if I'm using a Vive wand, have this alignment. If I'm using an Oculus Touch, through Steam VR, have this alignment. If I'm using an Oculus Touch through um, uh, the Oculus SDK, use a different alignment. So I need to try and get that working this week as well. And then I think we might be ready for a version 3.2.0 to go to the Unity Asset Store. So that's kind of my plan. Um, and I want to try and get that done before Unite Europe because I'm going to be speaking at Unite Europe if people aren't aware of that. I'm going to be doing a talk on VRTK. So I'd like the Unity Asset Store version to be the one that I'm kind of talking about to people. So fingers crossed we can get that uploaded um, within the next couple of weeks. Um, okay, so that's everything I think I've covered. Yeah, okay, so the hand models... Um, we've got some hand models, and let me just bring up uh, GitHub. Uh, so, if we look down here, there's been an issue in the GitHub um, thing for a default set of animated hand models. So, there is the concept within VRTK at the moment of how to do um, custom models for the controller. So there's a, there's a scene in here uh, called Custom Controller Model um, that uses the Wonder Hands. So if we run this, I've only got one controller plugged in, but it should be okay. You can see we've got this controller here, and it's a very, very simple hand that's just got two basic animations. If I press the trigger, it moves the index block. If I press the grip, it kind of moves the rest of them, and that's really it. So that shows how to add a custom hand. But what a lot of people have been asking for is actually hand models within VRTK. Um, 
So we've got somebody to build the hand models, as I said, uh, Jim the Grim from uh, the VRT Guy Slack channel has been working on this. So we've got the models now, he's done them, he's, he's painted all the weights on them, he's created all the animations. Um, and we've got it all in a blend file as well uh, for Blender. So if you want to add your own in, you, you totally can. Uh, and this is what the default's going to be. So by default, if you're not holding any buttons down, you'll just get an idle hand. If you just press the grip down, your your three fingers on that hand will curl in, and your thumb will be up. So it's kind of like a gun, you know, like a finger gun. So you could use that as a point or something. If you press the trigger down and the grip down, that'll curl your three fingers and your uh, trigger finger so it looked like you've got a thumbs up if you have your grip down and the touchpad down so effectively what we're saying here is the grip is the three bottom fingers the trigger controls your pointer finger and the touchpad will control the thumb and this is just going to be kind of like an example you don't have to use this um, we're just going to show a way of how you can do this so then people can extend it if they want um, but within here so if you've got the grip down and the touchpad down so that's effectively saying our three fingers and our thumb down you've kind of got that point um, and then if you just put the touchpad down and have the other two up, it's kind of like you're just holding up four fingers but your thumbs come down. If you hold all the buttons down, you go into a fist. Um, if you hold just the trigger down, you kind of have this weird shape where you've just got three fingers up. And if you hold the trigger and the touchpad down, you kind of got it like an, an OK symbol. But when I'm looking at this next week, what I'm going to try and do is have it so um, you can assign button presses or button combinations to specific animations. So I may, I'm gonna try and make it generic enough that when you just drag and drop this script into the scene, it will do this, but there's nothing to stop you from doing, um, dragging and dropping the example, uh, the animations in that example into different slots or whatever. And then saying, when you press a trigger, you get a fist, or when you press a grip, you get a fist. You know, so you can use these animations however you want. You don't have to use them how I'm kind of setting up the default. The plan is to have a default that shows people how you can do things, but then let you go nuts and change it. So that's the hand model thing. I hope that's uh, going to be useful to some people. I'm not sure if there's any other issues. Um, let's have a look at the waffle board as well. This is a, a great thing if you're not aware of this. Is if you go to the uh, the repo click uh, project backlog. We use a system called waffle.io, which is basically just gives us like a to-do list. You may have used um, Trello or something like that. It's very similar to that, but it links into all those GitHub issues, so we don't have to create them on Trello and then create them on GitHub and whatever. These are all literally the GitHub issues. And you can use this to see um, what's going to be worked on soon, what's currently being worked on, and what's in review. Things in review, are, there's pull requests up for them, and I'm just waiting for people to review them uh, before they get merged. Um, so this is one thing that came up last week as well that I'm going to look at. The ability to clone an item when grabbing it from a snap drop zone. So at the moment you can drop something in a drop zone and then you grab it and you can pick it back out. But someone said it'd be really cool is if when you drop something in a snap drop zone, you could grab it and pull out a copy of it and the original stayed in there. So you're kind of like setting an inventory, an inventory, an inventory slot. And I think uh, Hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades does this. So you've got kind of like um, your ammo belt on you, and you can drop ammo into there or a gun into there as well, I think. And then you can grab the things. Well, there you go. How is it? How tall? There you go. It was you that said that idea. So again, proof that um, when you say things, they do get listened to and they do get added. Um, but I think uh, H3VR does this that when you grab stuff, and you pull stuff out, it stays in the inventory, but you can pull new ones out, so you can like, keep pulling ammo clips out. So I want to try and look at that this week as well. Um, again, I mentioned this snap handle thing. Uh, there's a couple of bugs, but you can see we're very, very close now to get into this 3.2.0 release. So fingers crossed, we shall be there soon. Um, so that is my roundup for the week. Pass it over to you guys now. What do you want to see? What do you want to talk about? Any questions? I know um, somebody in the Slack channel had a question. It was VR Gamer Dev Girl, but I'm not sure if she's in here. Let's ask her.
let's see if she's in and if she is then I know she had a question but if anyone else has got any questions you just feel free to hurl them out or if you want to talk about anything VR related or anything at all like the price of Ethereum at the moment yeah so that issue uh, Dr. Bloor um, the fix for it at the moment isn't great so well it's easy to do but it's not great so this is uh, in relation to this one the varying snap handle transform so the way the rotation of things works if we look at that scene um, and then let's look at the bow so the way things are rotated to the uh, the interactable object is if you look down here the the grab uh, attach mechanic of it has what's called a snap handle point um, and this is the, a transform that provides a position and a rotation of where the object should be rotated to to fit according to the controller and this is its snap point here and it literally is just a transform that you can give it some rotation the problem is is the Vive controller is at a different default rotation to the Oculus Touch controller um, and all the example scenes are set up on a Vive controller so to fix your problem, what you'd need to do is change these numbers at the moment. Uh, you'd need to change these numbers so they're correct for the Oculus Touch controller. But that's not great, you see, because if you were making a cross-platform game, it means you'd have to have some code in there to know what SDK you're using, to know what rotation to put in there. So this, um, this task here is actually trying to solve that. So hopefully I'm going to do that this week as well. But the quick fix for it, as you've asked, is to just change these numbers so it looks good. Did uh, did my message just get lost? Oh no, she hasn't answered me. So I hope that helps. Um, any other questions until VR Gamer Dev Girl gets in here so I can answer the question that she's been asking in Slack. It's easy for me to just show it. Force teleport. Okay, we can go over force teleport. Um, I was actually going to do that in a YouTube video this week as well. So I've been doing a series of YouTube videos um, around teleporting and how to style the teleporter. To because people always say, "Oh, the VRTK teleporter looks ugly." And I thought, "Yeah, but that's a default style. You can apply whatever style you like." So I've been doing a series of videos to show how to use it, how to style it. Um, and I've been using the styles from the the lab, so the Steve VR interaction system. Uh, so you can follow that. And one of the things I was going to do this week was show how to do programmatic things with the teleporter. So um, I'll show you the force teleport because it's a programmatic thing. So what we can do is, if I on here, for instance, let's just add in the. Um, controller events example script that one and I'm just gonna hack this together just to show you so I don't want any debug information to happen so I'm gonna delete this and we'll have it on trigger release so when we release the trigger let's get rid of this uh, I'm just gonna have um, a reference to a teleporter basic teleport teleporter and then here we will do when we release the trigger we'll call that force teleport to teleporter dot force teleport and now here I can either give it my own destination marker so I can just create one on the fly and just dump it straight into there so I don't have to have a separate object that is of type destination marker to throw the event or everything or I can just pass in raw data so I can say what target um, so we'll just use the floor so if I do game object I'll find floor that's the target the target it needs to know a target because it needs to know where you're teleporting to um, is a valid location uh, and then we give it a position so if we look here we can see by default our um, camera rig where is it Steam VR, let's say our camera rig is at Zero zero zero. Um, oh no, it's, it's actually here, isn't it? Really, zero zero point five zero. So we'll teleport it over to like 
three, zero point five three or something maybe. Um, so all we do here is we give it a new vector three, and that can be three zero point five three, um, and we can give it a new rotation if we want. Or, and we can also tell it to force its position and the force position will say no matter what I give you as that new vector 3 that's where you're going to so ignore everything else but we're not going to do anything like that so we're literally just going to do oh yeah that's got to be a transform hasn't it so get the transform of that um, so what we'll do now is if we run the scene when I release the trigger what will happen is we'll teleport without needing to do anything else so this is what force teleport does so if you can see our camera rig I just highlight the camera when it loads. Uh, let's highlight. So you can see our camera is there. If I get the controller and I press the trigger down and release, we get an all reference. And that is because I don't know how to use Unity. It's because I set this to have um, a teleporter on it. So we need to give that our teleporter. So let's try doing it again. So again, if I press down on the trigger and release, you can see I've moved. And it used the teleporter and everything. We got the blink effect. So rather than having to set the play area's position manually um, by going, just move the play area to here, and then you have to figure out the fads and everything yourself, you can literally just use the, um, the the force teleport to reset that position to wherever you want it to be. So this is great. So if you've got like a, a default spawn area or something, you can you can spawn the player there by just using force teleport. So that is the force teleport script. Is there a way to continue highlight interact object using while using them even after you stop touching it? Um well you can call the uh Let's go, let's try that. Because you can just call the highlight script uh, highlight and unhighlight stuff yourself. Um, but, so what, what do you want to do? You touch it and it highlights, and then you. So it's not highlighting when you first touch it. So you touch it, it highlights, you move your, your hand away and you want it to stay highlighted. So if we go here a sec, to this one, and actually let's not do this one because this doesn't have uh, a custom script for it. So let's go to using a grabbed object because we can just use whirly gig. So if we go to whirly gig and we give it a touch highlight color, what we're, ha what we're gonna have here is this. So we touch it, it highlights, we stop touching it, it doesn't highlight. Um, so what we want to do then is, when we stop touching it, we just want to call it highlighter. So if I just open the wordy gig. So if we do, uh, let's just do public, ooh, spelling public, override, void, start touching. Uh, I'm just going to keep a variable called has touched. Let's see if this is what you want. And then when you start touching, we set this to true, and then override, stop touching. Um, and now all we need to do is get a reference to its highlighter uh, when we stop touching it. So if we do uh, the FDK base, oh no, it's in highlighters, isn't it? Uh, Using TRTK highlighters, and then down here we do the TRTK base highlighter highlighter equals. I think it should be on here. Get component TRTK base highlighter, um, and then we should just be able to call highlighter highlight with the color that's on here already. So it should be highlight color, touch highlight color. Um, 
and we don't want to do right, you want it to just happen immediately. Right, so let's see if this works. So basically all we've done is we said when we stop touching, get the highlighter and then just call highlight again on it. Uh, what are you saying? You have to message aimbow. Okay, so changing that did work for you. That's cool. Um, but as I say, there's going to be something that just handles that automatically for you. So let's see if this works. So we touch it. Right, so stop touching. Ah, oh, I know why. Because I think it gets disabled, maybe. Can we do that? No, we can't do that there. Is this because disable when idle's on? Let's just try turning disable when idle off so it doesn't disable the script. Oh, right. Is that stop touching even getting called? Let's just put a, a debug in there. When we stop touching it, we should call that. Yeah, so it does call that. I'll tell you what it is. I bet this is because um, stop touching does some stuff uh, and then it resets the highlight afterwards. So let's just be a bit cheeky. Uh, void uh, re highlight, we'll call this. We'll move all this into here. And a little hack to get stuff to kind of happen near the end of the frame is just to invoke that method. Um, really, you should probably use a coroutine and do wait for end of frame. But if you just invoke it after z uh, zero F, that should get run after all that other code is run. This should work. As I said, the best way to do that would be in a coroutine and do it to wait at the end of the frame. There we go. So once we've touched it, it stays highlighted. And if you were to use a different highlighter on that, so if you wanted the outline object highlight, which is not going to work at all well on this object. Uh, <laughs> see how it looks. Uh, too bad. There you go. It stays highlighted once we've touched it. And then you, if you wanted, you could have it so it turned off. Maybe when you... I don't know, maybe when you grab it, it turns off or something, I don't know, but that's how you can basically force the highlighter back on. Um, oh, VR Gamer Dev Girl, so she's, her internet's messing up, so she's not going to be able to get on the stream, so I will not answer her questions this time, man. Um, how would I make a VR tape measure? Not entirely sure the best way of doing that. I know there's one, they, there was one in an Oculus package, but it was all behind an NDA, so I can't show that. Um, what you could do for it, for a tape measure potentially, if we go to, where's the joint grab an example? Grab an object with joints. So what you could do, is you pick an object up with one hand and then when the other hand touches it and grabs maybe the secondary controller actions would work better for this so a secondary controller action you'd have to write your own secondary controller action but what it would be is the first hand's holding it yeah so you pick something up in hand A or controller A controller B grabs it you'd know that the secondary controller actions know the point of where that initial grab happened and then the further you move your hand away from the object you then have the new point of the controller so what I'd probably do is have another um, game object that represents a type of like a little cube or something and I'd scale that to be the distance between the controller and the actual object that you're grabbing um, so if you grab it right next to it and move it away uh, it scales accordingly so it's very similar to the way these scaling ones work um, let's see if I can do it without putting my headset on um, let's see if I can grab this so you can see I can I can actually stretch these out it's this kind of concept 
Um, but I think you'd have to do a fair bit of custom code to, to get it to work. But I don't think it'd be too hard to do. Um, unfortunately, I think it's one of those things that's a bit off what VRTK is. So if I was to do it now, we'd probably end up spending half the time of the live stream just covering how to program that. Um, but, you know, if it's something that you want to do and you, you're stuck with, join the uh, VRTK Slack channel. I'm sure someone, even me, maybe, uh, within the week, maybe today, can help you out with that. But you could definitely do it using the uh, the secondary controller grab action. What's this other question? What's the best way to make a straight pointer that has to point to an object for X seconds before it triggers an event, but reset if you point it away? Oh, okay, so you can already do that. That's something that was added not too long ago, I don't think. Um, if you go onto here, so we've got this generate canvas button, for instance, and if you point at it and click it, it generates canvas. Um, what you can do on the pointers now, uh, right, controller, is they have a click after hover duration. So all you have to do is say, if I'm hovering over that amount of time, uh, I want to click. So this is really useful if you're using like a headset pointer uh, and you don't have um, uh, like a controller for actually controlling it. So you want to look at something, wait for a certain amount of time and then select it. So let's say three seconds. And we also get the events in here that when we start hovering over it and when it's clicked. So you could listen for that start event, start doing an animation, uh, listen for the leave event, cancel that animation, uh, listen for the clicked event. If the clicked event happens, you know to play like the selected animation or whatever. So you could do that. But now, if we do this, you can see I don't actually have to. Um, if I just hold this over there for three seconds, it'll click it. So now we've got that. If I just move over here, you can see we've got that temp canvas. If I scroll out a bit, um, so I'm not going to click the button. I'm just going to hold this pointer over it for three seconds. And then we got another temp canvas. So that's really useful if you were using like a, a pointer attached to the headset. You can uh, just use that hover after click duration or click after hover duration. I hope that answered that. This is the thing with VRTK, <laughs> there's loads of these little hidden features in there. So, and it's really difficult for me to kind of like document them. I mean, they're all documented in uh, the VRTK documentation, but as we were talking about in the Slack channel this week, the VRTK documentation is very API driven. So it's, if you're used to developing, it's an API documentation. And as a developer, you're kind of used to API documentation, but it's not very, user-friendly documentation so we want to kind of look at how to make the, the written docs more user-friendly but again these uh, live streams are useful for that because you can ask a question I can show how, how it's done uh, yeah you can um, back a sultan so what you can do I'll show you that on this scene as well uh, where's my mouse gone so this keyboard over here, for instance, if we just look at this, not all of the keys, if we go to world keyboard on the UI canvas, uh, you can have click on pointer collision, uh, and we can also auto activate the pointer um, within a certain distance. So what that will do, I might have to put a headset on for this. So if I grab the pointer now, and just teleport over to here. You can. I'm a bit low. You can see that by default, if I look at these and press the button, we get that come up. Uh, let's just clear that. Um, but now, without pressing, if I just touch this, you can see it auto activates, and then pushing into it will actually. It's like I'm tapping it to turn them on. So that's just a feature of the UI canvas within VRTK. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it depends what you're doing. It's not great for very, very small UI elements. Um, you might be better off uh, with other mechanisms for, rather than use very small UI uh, 
element to try and touch with your controller. But you can do it. Uh, is there a way to turn the camera 90 degrees? Uh, yeah, you can turn the camera um, however you want. So when we were doing that forced teleport earlier, if I've still got that open. Where was I doing that? In here. So in forced teleport, um, if you wanted to forcibly turn it around, you could pass in here um, a destination rotation, which is a quaternion. So we could do, uh, how would I do it? I want to do a new quaternion based on its Euler angle down off. So what I want to do is, can you do a new quaternion based on, yeah, no. So, oh, I'm just going to do it this way. You can probably do this, but I don't know how to code. So let's just do uh, vector three rot equals new vector three zero f ninety f zero f, uh, and then we're just going to do uh, quaternion Euler. Which one is the one that's deprecated? That one Euler, and then rot. Oh, I could have done it that way, but not. That'll do. So that, when you teleport with the force teleport, that will actually apply a rotation to it. Um, the other thing that you can do, again, I covered this in the uh, teleport tutorial series that's on YouTube. Uh, you can use a direction indicator. So if we go to, actually I'll do it in, I'll show you another way first. So you can use um, the teleport zones as well. Uh, so these teleport zones, if we look at these ones, I've actually got a rotation on them. Uh, with rotation and you can tell it to snap to rotation so don't rotate when I teleport to it or snap to it so when I actually teleport to here it will change my uh, play area to be pointing in that relevant direction as well um, or as I say you can use the let's have a look at a good example thing for this you can use the uh, the pointer direction prefab uh, so let's just pick this one um, and then if you look in the prefabs folder, there is pointer direction indicator, so just drop that in. And then on the play, no it's not the player, it's on the pointer, isn't it? Uh, so the pointer can take a, a direction indicator, so we're just going to give it that. And then if we run this scene, let's turn my headset so we can see better. So you can see we kind of got this like really basic object and you can change this and I say if you look at the video tutorials uh, it shows how to style this up and make it look nice and whatever but you can see wherever I rotate it is the way I end up looking which is very similar to like what they do in Robo Recall. Yeah that's, yeah they probably, I'm guessing there's a uh, lag on the stream but that's what this is. Like if you've played Robo Recall you'll know that as well you can you can rotate it to be looking in your, your final way. As I say, check the uh, YouTube tutorial series on teleporting as it covers all this. It covers how to style it and, and all sorts of stuff. It's uh, hopefully a useful series for people. No worries. Are there any other questions from anybody? I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can go over. Um, whilst people are thinking of questions. Um, I've mentioned kind of what we do. So there's not a lot that's coming up at the moment. Because I'm trying to get 3.2 out tips on throwing objects what do you mean throwing like there's all sorts of stuff you can do with throwing so if I go into the example scene there's there's all sorts of different parameters you, you can give an object or the uh, the, the grab script um, so if you look at an object here uh, you can uh, you can apply throw multipliers to it so you get more force when you throw or you can put a uh, like point something in there so rather than that be one it can be like 0.5 which means there's less uh, power when you throw it um, you can have the throw velocity 
based on where the grab attaches. So this is quite good. Let's say you've got like kind of one of those uh, adding velocity to the object when the trigger is released. If you want to add velocity to it, it depends what you want. If you want to increase your throw power, increase the throw multiplier. If you want to, can you change the color of the black screen? This one here, yeah. If you um, just start messing with the pins that connect your uh, computer to your monitor, you can probably change the whole screen color if you just start messing with them. Uh, now, haptic rumble does work for the uh, touch, or it has in the past, as far as I'm aware. Um, ah, are you using it through Steam VR, or are you using it through Oculus Utilities? Because I think there's some issues in Steam VR where the the motors of the Oculus Touch don't rumble with enough force, so you have to increase. The, uh, the force, but I think that's a bug for Steam VR. If you're using Oculus Utilities, um, they should be all right, as far as I'm aware. Um, what scene is it, 16? Oh, this doesn't actually use it, and it's in the script, isn't it? What you can do is, well, that's the thing that actually does the rumble, is it the breakable cube? When you say you're using Oculus, so are you using the Oculus SDK or did you import the Steam VR? Uh, um, what's the thing that does the rumble? Is it Sword? It might be Sword that does the rumble on Collision, isn't it? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so trigger haptic pulse, uh, haptic strength, is about like this. And you can try just changing that to a one, which will give it full force and see if it rumbles. Okay, so if you're using the Oculus SDK, it should work. You shouldn't, you shouldn't notice any issue. Um, but try increasing that within the sword script on that example scene and see if that helps. Try increasing the strength higher because it's set to 0 0.5, which should rumble a, an Oculus touch controller. But as far as I'm aware, it works. I haven't used the uh, the Rift for a while. Um, but the last time I checked, it was working. And nothing's changed in that area. You don't actually need to do um, OVR haptics and give it a clip either. You can do... Uh, uh, you can pass haptic audio clips into this now as well. So you can do trigger haptic pulse. Uh, controller reference and then give it an audio clip so if you want to use audio clips within VRTK you can okay cool there you go we don't need to use a hundred you can just use one it's zero to one um, if you put a hundred in it will just clamp it back down to one but yeah as I was saying uh, VRTK now supports audio clips as well not just for oculus touch but also for steam VR oculus touch works way better than steam VR but if you want now, you can just use uh, the VRTK controller haptics, trigger haptic pulse, and one of the options now is to pass an audio clip in, or you can just do it the old fashioned way, which is to just uh, rumble it for a certain amount of time. Which is useful. Yeah, it's normalized between zero and one, because SteamVR does this crazy thing where it's zero to three, nine, nine, nine. Um, so it's just confusing. So. Uh, VRTK just adds 0 to 1 normalised and then that translates into whatever the SDK you're using. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, this, to get the uh, Robo Recall esque rotation, again, check the YouTube tutorials on this channel. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe because there's always cool videos come out every week uh, teaching stuff. But I will go over it again. Um, I'll just pick a scene. This one will do. So what you want is um, the prefab in here called pointer direction indicator. Just drag and drop it into your scene somewhere. And then on the controller that you want it, if you look at the VRTK pointer, in the customization, it takes a direction indicator. So that one we dragged and dropped onto our scene. We just want to drop it into there. As soon as we've done that, 
It works. Oh, cool, Dr. Bloor. You're, you're a complete beginner to it then. Proto Party Games, by the way, is the guy that I was talking about earlier who made the hands. That's Jim the Groom, so everybody say big thanks to Proto Party Games. He's the guy that did the hands. And if you haven't seen the hands, let me see if I can get uh, a quick picture of them. Because I did do a little animation that I posted to Twitter. Twitter, man. Uh, copy link to tweet. There we go. You're a contributor. What did you contribute? You contribute some codes. Uh, let's see if we can get this up. So these are the hand animations that are coming to VRTK with these hands that Pro Party Games has done. They're looking pretty awesome. So as I say, hopefully I'm going to get these in this week along with those snap handle stuff. That's my focus for this week. Get snap handles in, get that in, and then I've got to work on my Unity uh, Unite tour. I haven't started it yet. It's like in two weeks' time. So I've got to have something to talk about. But these look wicked. Hopefully they're going to be very useful for people. Are you still on like a really old version of VRTK? You're like on version 2 something. I think Blue Teak's on a really old version. So for those um, who are potentially new or don't know, Blue Teak is the developer behind Quiver. Um, and he's been using VRTK like right from the start. And he's contributed so much to VRTK. So if you use the bow and arrow stuff or the child of control uh, grab or the radial menus or the hip tracking... This is all stuff that uh, Blue Teak, the uh, developer of Quiver, has done. But he's on like, I think he's on like version 2 or something. I don't even know if he's updated. But it's going to be a bit of a, a jaunt to go to him, to, to version 3. Yeah, that's all down to uh, Blue Teak. He did that, Carl. Well, the... The concept of the, the grip customization at the moment, Def Puppy, is we're not doing any um, customization straight away. Uh, what we're going to do is just get those basic animations in, but we're providing the blend file and everything, so you can uh, make your own animations if you want. But then over time, people can contribute animations in and, and all sorts. And you know, what what we try and do with VRTK is do the the minimum viable thing to start with, figure out what people want and then grow it rather than try and come up with this grand solution up front because you never get it right anyway. So we, we kind of like make it really fluid and we just do it as we go and, and see what works. Adaptive quality doesn't work anymore in Unity 5, 6 and above um, with Steam VR because there's a bug with it um, with Steam VR. So, and Unity 5.6. In Unity 5.5, all it does is it reduces the uh, render quality. So you get, um, you know, faster frame rates. Uh, but it doesn't work in Unity 5.6 because of a bug within Steam. I'm pretty sure we've got an, a GitHub issue for it. Uh, adaptive. Let's see. Yeah, and I've got, a, I've got a PSA for it. So it's issue 1138. So, if we go back here. One, one, three, eight. So you can see there's a whole big issue here that it doesn't... Oh, it's actually a bug within Unity that's causing it, not within SteamVR. So it may have been fixed in Unity 2017. I do new. I haven't used 2017 yet.
do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it this week. That my, my two things for this week are getting the hands in and getting the uh, snap rotations in. Uh, no moving place should work as far as I'm aware. Are you pressing the button to move? Do you have, there's an activation button for it. I can't remember what it is by default. Um, that sounds cool. Natural hand stuff is sweet. I love all that stuff where it's like natural hand interactions and grabbings. And there's a good one that Leap Motion did in the week. I saw uh, their repo on it where, what do you mean no buttons work? Um, what is the activation button for it? Touchpad press. So you have to press the thumbstick down on the Oculus Touch, which isn't the best. Um, what you could try and do is just change the engage button to something else. Uh, change it to like I don't know trigger press or something um, but the engage button is to press which is fine on the uh, the Vive controller but on the Rift it might be annoying because it's it's a fair amount of force you have to provi provide to the, the thumbstick to get it to click down I always have to talk about the hands. The new Wonder Hands. Wonder Hands 2.0. Just need to give them a green and yellow skin. They'll definitely fit in a lot nicer with the uh, the new example scenes. Now you've got to rig the pig. That's the next thing to do. Rig the pig. When we've got a rigged pig, we can then have a, uh, a mascot for the uh, tutorial in the new example scenes, if they ever get done. If. We shall see. It'd be nice to get those new example scenes done. Because the, the existing ones, there's, there's so much um, duplication in them and they're just not overly useful and people don't even bother checking them. So it'd be nice to have something in there. Does anyone have any other questions? Hey Fuse man, how's it going man? Have you got any questions about VRTK? Anything that you've always wanted to know? Tell you what actually Fuse man, while you're here, I want to show you something because this is something that I see when you're using VRTK. You, uh, you still do the old fashioned way and I just wanted to show you this, that you can use controller events within VRTK, so you can just listen for events rather than having to do that thing where you, you're hooking to SteamVR's input stuff. Uh, I've still got it open here. So you just register the events, and then when you do something with that, a touch start or a touch end or whatever, you can then actually run some code. Yes, that's what we need to do. Jazz hands that just go crazy and make you feel sick. I actually did a tutorial on this actually, the uh, the controller events, because quite a few people were still doing it with uh, listening to booleans and that, which is like, it's it's fine and I do use it in some places, like the UI pointer script uses uh, the boolean to check for click and that, but most of the time using the events is so much easier. Okay, so... Oh, what you want to do, you want to be able to pick up a torch, for instance, and have it... Do you want it to replace the data, you just want it to hide the model? If you pick up a torch, you want to be able to pick something up as well. 
Is that what you're saying? Because you can you can hide the model when you pick stuff up easily enough. So if we go actually, if we go to the custom example scene, that'll uh, show us this. By the way, Fuse Man, you know the uh, hands that are coming to the RTK that I tweeted about earlier. It's Proto Party Games that built the hands. He's the master that that uh, modelled those hands and animations. So big ups to him. Um, right, what was I going to do? Uh, oh yeah, that was it. Custom controller model. So there's two things you can do. You can either have a custom controller model, which those hands will. So as we see here, maybe. So I've got this hand. So these are replacing the controller model. But also, when I pick this gun up, you can see all I've done is I've turned off this. So you can turn it off. So it looks like you're holding it, which is what they do in like Job Simulator. And then if I grab it, if I can get them close enough. Uh, which is what they do in Job Simulator. You turn the hands off when you pick something up. Then you don't have to worry about grab actions and stuff like that. So would either of those help you, Max Vinton? Oh yeah, Death will be a... You have to swing the controllers to move forward. Actually, that's not entirely true. You, there is a setting in the moving play stuff where it will just work off the head bob. So depending on what setting you can have, you can just like keep your controllers still. And as long as your head's bobbing up and down, you do move forward. But that's... I, I can't remember what setting it is. I can go and have a look, I suppose. Um, play area. Uh, moving play... Uh, there you go, so you can have headset only. If you do headset only, it will only work on head bob. We can have headset and controllers, which it works on both in some way. Yeah, that seems it was. Uh, what example was it? Uh, it's example scene 32. So I literally just loaded up example three. Example fit. Example fit. Can't speak. Example scene thirty two. If you load up example scene thirty two, which is in VRTK examples, um, it's got those custom controllers. And all you need to do um, for this, I'll just show you how to do that. Is in your script alias, you just have your hand model um, child into that, and then within your SDK, you just want to turn off the models if that's generating any. So Steam VR generates this model by default. So you just want to untick that so it doesn't actually show up. And then within the SDK manager um, for VRTK, uh, sorry, for Steam VR, the model alias is don't auto populate this because you don't want to get the ones that Steam VR generates. You want to just drag the ones that you've created here into there. So drag and drop them and it will use them. Well, I'll save this video anyway, Max Vinton. These will get saved to YouTube so you can watch it back. Child of Controller and Grab, that's my favourite scene because all it's demonstrating is how to do the Child of Controller and Grab, but it's really a bow and arrow. <laughs> I remember when we did that and uh, when, when Blue Team built it all and it created like a, a bow and arrow example scene and everything in it was like really uh, different and I was like, yeah, but it's got to be really boring. <laughs> it's got to fit within what it, what it's showing off. I was like, what's it showing off? And he's like, the child of controller on grab. He's like, yeah, we do that then. So you end up getting this scene with bows and arrows that just showing off one of the grab mechanics, which gets showed off somewhere else as well, I think. This is a problem with example scenes. There's so much duplication. Hopefully one day they'll get redone. And they'll be lovely. I still like the idea of the farmhouse that you can walk around and... You can interact with things, um, and then you can go down into uh, kind of like this deep basement where there are then very um, specific example scenes. Yeah, the new events are really useful. Being able to have an event on everything just makes it easier. Then you don't need to have um, references to these objects and then check in the states of these objects because that was added a while back that you could get the state of 
uh, everything of an object. Um, but there were still actions that are happening that there weren't events for. So now hopefully just being able to listen to those events makes it much easier. And obviously with the Unity events makes it even easier as well. That's something else I covered I think in the... Uh, in one of the tutorial videos in the uh, controller events one. That using the controller events uh, example scene. So I can do that here quickly just to show. Um, so if I minimize all this, it's already got controller events on. If I add the controller events example, controller events, unity events, so you get a ton of events for the unity event. But what I'm going to do is trigger pressed and trigger release. So I'm going to add something in here. I'm just going to get the floor maybe. Now let's get this. Let's use that. Let's be nice. Uh, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drop it into there. And I'm going to say game object is off. And then when we release it, wrong thing. When we release it, I'm going to grab that capsule again. And it's game object. That active is true. So all we've done now is without any coding, we basically when we press the trigger down, we're going to turn this off when we release the trigger, it's going to come back on, and that's just using the controller event unity event helper. I think I've got the right controller in my hand. Let's find out. Yeah, there we go. So that's without any coding, and that's what's really nice about these unity event helpers that every event or C sharp delegate that's in VRTK has a corresponding Unity event helper for it. So they're pretty cool. Um, I wonder what else there is to show off. I'll tell you what I'll, I'll do. I'll go onto the YouTube channel on here. Um, And I'll just show you that tutorial. Well, not tutorial. What have I just done? I just minimised the wrong window. That's what I wanted. So, where are they? Uh, playlists. This one, this is it. Tutorial teleporting. So this has currently got five in, but it's going to get bigger. Um, so definitely worth checking these out if you want to know more about stuff within VRTK. What was that question? How do you want to find the line placement in controller tooltips with the line point to the buttons? They should automatically point to them anyway. Are you on the latest version of VRTK or are you using the Unity Asset Store version? Because if you're using the Unity Asset Store version, there was an, there's an issue with Oculus where they don't point correctly all the time. But if you're on the GitHub master, that should just work. But just to let you know, if you do want to change them, I'll show you. Um, where is it? Object tooltips, isn't it? Uh, where's object tooltips? Oh, there it is, tooltips. Um, so if you want to point them to somewhere else, all you need to do is tell it the transform settings of where you want it to point to so you literally find the transform you want it to point to and you drag and you drop it into there um, so if you use an oculus and you use an oculus avatar you need to set it up so in oculus here uh, where is it oh, it's on the actual top is it you have to make sure that's ticked as well, so Oculus Avatar is used. It should automatically tick when you install Oculus Avatar. But as I say, if you do want to point into somewhere specific, as long as you give it the transform of where you want it to point to manually here, it will point to that. Worth trying, see if it works for you. And again, you can use these controller tooltips are just uh, a combination of object tooltips, and these are object tooltips here, and you can apply these to anything. Um, 
So um, it's just uh, a prefab and object tooltip is, or uh, where are they? Prefabs, object tooltip, you just grab them, drag them, dump them into the scene, uh, tell you want it, where you want it to draw the line to, provide some stuff, and you can tooltip anything. If you can, that would be cool. Having a video to help people um, come up with their own animations is just going to be better anyway, because then other people can start contributing. So, yeah, if you can, that'd be awesome. Do it. Oh, the frames per second calculator. Yeah, that's useful, and uh, it's better than the one that's in Unity, because the one that's in Unity is not accurate at all. Ah, they're fine. Doing talky videos, just talk rubbish. No one cares anyway. Yeah, I think the the Unity frames per second calculator says like in some scenes that you get like three hundred frames a second or something when you're clearly not. Um, so the one within uh, VRTK does give you uh, a decent amount. That's something else somebody tweeted in the week, and I don't know if many people are aware of it. Because um, someone was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And they're like, oh, I've never even noticed that existed. Uh, let's do it on Simple Pointer. Um, so there's a, a prefab, which is uh, a console viewer canvas. So we'll drag this in, and we'll move it up. And what this does is, let's just make it bigger, maybe. Um... Nah, it should be fine then. If I just look down here. Uh, so what this does, it actually puts uh, your console into VR for you. So, problem is I'm not going to be able to, can I point? So you can see as I'm touching stuff, whatever we get in the console here, we get down here. Um, I can't click these because I haven't got the uh, thing set on the pointer. Uh, never mind. Um, but you can see you get the... Uh, your console within here and you can attach this to anything as well. You could attach it to your, your controller if you wanted and get it to track. So somebody mentioned that in a tweet in the week and all oh, this is really useful and like it's one of those hidden things that people probably aren't aware because it's not really uh touted. But it's very useful. I say you can you can child it to anything so if you wanted to child it to like the controller probably isn't the best thing I'm about to do but Let's, let's see. Probably need to set it up more than what I'm doing. There you go, look, it's following my controller on. I probably need to move it a bit away from my controller. There's my headset. There you go. So obviously it's just gonna it's just gonna point at that now though. Um I could probably tell it to ignore Raycast. I want to ignore Ray Cast layer as well, maybe. Um, or I could move it out of the way so it wasn't doing that. There we go, I can point through now. Move my headset. So you get it to follow you around and, and whatever. You could access it on a button or something. But it's quite a nice little feature. Uh, adaptive quality is still a thing, but it doesn't work in Unity 5.6. Um, there's a, a bug in Unity 5.6, I'm not sure if they fixed it in um, Unity 2017, but we had it up early, didn't we, the issue for it. Uh, this is it, look. That's the issue, um, so it can't be fixed in Unity 5.6, unfortunately. But I never had much luck with it either, but I didn't really do anything really detailed. I know a few people in older versions of Unity uh, said it was great and it worked really well. Um, it's mostly just the stuff out of the uh, the lab adaptive quality stuff, the lab render adaptive quality stuff. It's somewhat lifted from that um, and then heavily customised uh, from there. But yeah, in Unity 5.6 it does not work, unfortunately.
Right, that's time 20 past. I'm going to try and limit these uh, Q&A sessions to an hour and a half each week. So um, I'm going to look to end in 10 minutes. So if anyone's got any questions they want to get in last minute, then ask now. Uh, if you don't get a question in or there's something that you want to know and you're watching this back, not live, uh, then join the Slack channel invite.vrtk.io is the web address if you go there you can invite yourself into the slack channel there's generally somebody around to either help you out or to just generally chat to it's it's kind of just like one big youth club where everybody just comes and chats which is cool you know there's no there's no real uh drive behind the uh slack channel other than to give people a place where they can just talk vent frustration, ask questions, get help, you know, make sure people are, are talking to people because that's how we solve things by talking to each other, not siloing ourselves off. Uh, so yeah, if you're not a member of the Slack channel and you're watching this back, then join and I'm sure your question will be answered. But there is still 10 more minutes, so if anybody does have any questions, you're welcome, you're welcome. I hope it helps people. It's the reason I like to do it, because it seems to help so many people develop for VR, which is cool. But again, it's not just me. You've got to give big, big props to the community. VRTK wouldn't be anything without the community behind it. So there's so many contributors in all different ways, whether it's people that contribute code, as I've already mentioned, Blue T contributed tons of stuff. Uh, the controls were all contributed or majority contributed by Ten Finger Army. Um, climbing was done by Matt Boy. Uh, so if you've used the climbing stuff, that was all Matt Boy stuff. Uh, there's bug fixes. The SDK manager stuff. And, and so much contribution um, has got to, you've got to give a big, 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 big shout out to, to Bo Decker, or as he's known in uh, Slack, B-D-D-C-K-R, which is the worst name to say, uh, because you can't say it, but it is short for Bo Decker. Um, could you have to make a hammer hitting a nail? Uh yeah, maybe quickly. Um, hammer hitting a nail. Uh, basic object grabbing. Oi, what you'd want to do. So if we pretend this is our hammer, this is our nail, let's say. Well, all you want to do is when this gets hit, you want to move it down. Again, this is going to be kind of those... <laughs> yeah, this is kind of those ones that's probably outside of specific VRTK. But um, it'd take too long to show it. What you want to do is this, when it collides with this, if we remove this as an interactable object, uh, remove all this rubbish off it, um, and so we've got a collider on it, uh, we can make that a trigger collider, uh, make it kinematic, let's say. Uh, I'd love to support AR if I had a HoloLens or something, or somebody wants to support that. You know, VRTK is uh, a project to enable people to try and build whatever they can in VR, AR, you know, whatever it can help with. It's not restricted to anything. Um, the more it helps people in whatever they're doing, the better. Right, let's just make a quick script on here. Let's see if we're going to do this. Uh, nail. We'll call it. Um, I don't know if I should have put CS on the end of that. Don't seem to have prefixed it. I'm sure it's fine. Um, right, so this will be a trigger collider. Save changes now. What am I doing? Right, so in here, we just want to do void on trigger enter. Collider, collider, and points. There we go. And we'll have one in on trigger exit. I'm just going to debug in here. Just make sure this works. Tet. 
the live stream is um, just a Q and A session where people can ask stuff about VRTK, and I attempt to answer it um, to my best of my abilities. Let's see if this works. Now that's not picking that up because this is going to be one of those Unity issues, isn't it? Uh, I'll tell you what we could do. If we have this, not as a trigger, ah, but then does Unity pick them up as well? Uh, uh, see, it might not pick this up either. Oh, it does. So it picks up the collision, but it's not running my script for some reason. Um, when this interacts with this, we want it to do something. Because that's kinematic. Why is it having an effect on it? To make it a trigger collider. What actually that's a point, what's this? That's fixed John. Has a typo in it, does it? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's how you spell it in England, from that area. Um I'm still not getting the collision because this is breaking the joint. Why don't we get a collision? That's a. You know, I bet you'd get it if you used. Uh, catch a lighter, uh, Jim. I'm going to go in a minute anyway. Snap drop zone on top of your head. Just add a snap drop zone to follow your head around. I'll have to cover that next time because I'm running out of time. Uh, um, I'm trying to do this, but I'm probably going to run out of time doing this as well. I'll have to look at this another time. I reckon if you don't use a fixed joint grab attach and you use Charlie controller. That should pass through, but now... You're, you go to kinematic, you're not a trigger, but then if you're a trigger, that's kinematic. See, I can't remember off the top of my head the... Uh, there's like um, a matrix of collisions within Unity of what can collide with what. Uh, this isn't colliding with this. Because this is a, a trigger kinematic collider, and this is a non. If I make that a trigger, I think there's something more fundamental here. I, th I think that should collide. You could do that as well, you could cast a ray down, but I, I wonder if you could do it with this. But I think there's something more fundamental going on here. For some reason, I don't know why that's not even colliding. It should do. Um, do I even get that? Yeah, you see, my script's not running. This script isn't running for some reason. I don't know why. Um... I did apply it to it, didn't I? Yeah, no, script, yeah. Did I not say it? Ah, it's doing that thing where it doesn't save. Damn you! Right, there we go. Stupid bloody Visual Studio.
Oh, there we go. See? So we're getting that test come up. So what you could do is every time you collide it, you just move. You'd have to check like the velocity of the controller and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you could just move this position down. So transform dot position plus equals new vector three. Actually, no, you just want to do this, don't you? Vector three dot up. Uh, Time 0.01 maybe. I don't know. That should move it. That should move it down a bit each time you hit it. It's really annoying, isn't it? So there you go. Look, I'm kind of hammering it in. See, bung, 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 bung. Woohoo! There we go. Uh, any touchable menu? Um, depends what you mean. You can touch uh, things, and we covered that in the stream already. I'd go back and watch your stream uh, back and have a look for it because I do mention it. But just past half nine, and I do want to try and limit these uh, to an hour and a half, otherwise, my throat starts hurting. Um, so I'm going to call it quits now. But I will be back next week as these are a weekly live stream. I do them at the same time now every week. So every Sunday night at 8pm UK time. Um, so that's whatever time it is in your uh, time zone. It's like 8 hours ahead of uh, Pacific time. 5 hours ahead of uh, Eastern time. It's 1 hour behind European time. And you know, whatever. Um, but I'll do them at the same time every week, and there will be one every Sunday, uh, as long as I can do it. If I'm away on holiday or something, then obviously I can't do it, but I'll let you know. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I hope it has been helpful yet again. Um, did I buy my headset? I bought my Vive, where this whole thing started. I did buy my Vive last April, and then I, started, I bought it in the pre-orders. And then I started uh, VRTK. Uh, Oculus have been amazing, and they sent me uh, a Rift um, and a Touch for free. So that was awesome of them. Uh, Google have not sent me a Daydream. Oculus, unfortunately, haven't sent me a Gear VR either. Um, but I have had one headset, which was nice. So that's it. I am going to go now. Uh, as I say, I will be back next week and I'll be doing a new video for YouTube on Tuesday. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see the new videos. And I shall see you all later. Bye for now.